The NBA has always tried to make its league more competitive. Implementing salary cap, trade deadlines, and tampering fines are just some of the most simple ways it tries to cut down on super teams. Yet it seems like every year there's a new attempt at one. And just in the last couple years, there have been plenty of failed ones. The big three Nets, the current Lakers, the 2019 Sixers, and the list goes on. The ones that are making these super teams are the players themselves. And they are ruining NBA franchises and the NBA itself. Let's talk about it. Player empowerment has always been a subject that has always revolved around the name of LeBron James. He so-called started it because he went to a team where he controlled who he played with. And him and his favorite players, as in Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh at the time, made sure they went there at the same time and they took matters into their own hands in free agency. This was a big turning point for the NBA. It was actually something we have seen before. To say LeBron was the first guy to ask for help and actually control what his front office does is just complete idiocy because it's completely wrong. Paul Pierce, in the summer of 2007, in the offseason of 2007 when he noticed his team wasn't good enough, was contemplating if he should leave Boston in pursuit of a better team. Boston up to that point was not a good team. In the best situation, they were a first round exit as a bottom two seed. So what did Paul Pierce do? He asked for help and he got two stars in return. In the end of the day, player empowerment like the 2008 Celtics can work beautifully, but at the same time, it doesn't and it ruins fan franchises and the chances of your team competing after a player tells you what to do is actually lower than you think. With all that being said, let's put out some examples of players asking for things that they wouldn't want to do these days now that they see it in hindsight. And the first one we can mention is the dumpster fire of the 2022 LA Lakers. It was said that LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook met up and said that they will put all of their stats and all of their accolades on the line to make sure they can bring one more championship for the LA Lakers. At the end of the day, it failed tremendously. And Rob Palenka didn't want to do this trade, but also he doesn't want to risk losing one of LeBron or AD. So he did the trade. And just like Rob Palenka expected, it blew up in their faces. Russell Westbrook was simply not a good fit to the Lakers system, it was not something that they needed. And Russell Westbrook, in actuality, was the person that they shut down. They figured out how to play against Russell Westbrook in the playoffs in 2020 and shut him down and make him completely unimpactful. And then the next thing they do is trade for him. This was one of the, one of the most idiotic moves in NBA history and player empowerment fueled it. The next example we can think of is actually something that didn't go through. Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry wanted the Warriors to cut Gary Payton II to make room for Avery Bradley this offseason. Bob Myers stuck his foot down and said, no, I'm not cutting a good young asset for Avery Bradley. And you know what? It ended up working beautifully. The Warriors now have a system in which Gary Payton II thrives in, and he's been playing the best basketball of his career by far. Not only that, Gary Payton is one of the best role players in the league, while Avery Bradley is stinking it up on a very ugly Lakers team. In hindsight, what Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson said was ludicrous, and it was stupid. Yet again, a result of player empowerment. And the last one I will talk about that didn't go through but was a player empowerment thing was when LeBron James wanted Eric Spolstra to be fired from Miami Heat. This was in the wake of the 2011 Finals. LeBron James didn't get the touches he needed or wanted just to show out in the Finals, let alone help the Heat win in the Finals. And it was embarrassing, a big stain on his resume. So he decided to take it out on the coach. And Eric Spolstra was on the hot seat. LeBron James didn't show up in the finals because they were running ISO plays with D-Wade and pick and rolls with Chris Bosh. LeBron James was not a part of the system in the finals. And it quite frankly did not work. It was a heliocentric system when you have three stars, which those two terms contradict themselves completely. And in the end of the day, they did not fire Eric Spolstra. And LeBron James went on to win two championships with the Miami Heat. But imagine if they did. Eric Spolstra right now is known as the best coach in the NBA, leading a Heat team who has been killed with injuries this year to the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Eric Spolstra has constantly put his team in the best situation to contend every single year. Imagine if the Miami Heat listened to LeBron James in that situation. We would see a whole different NBA. You know, I think... When you look at teams like the LA Lakers who are now a dumpster fire and something that will not recover for the next five years, you can see it as a negative to what LeBron James has done to them. 
Sure, maybe get rid of draft picks and young players that could have brought you assets in the future or could have even been a star on your team on a championship level winning team. But I wouldn't go so far to say that. I mean, yes, he gets rid of draft picks, but I can tell you this much. One championship has a lot more meaning to it than like five or six first round picks. And although LeBron James might have single-handedly costed the Lakers another championship for the next five years to come, he also got them one. I'm not saying that player empowerment is completely stupid. I'm just saying that there's a reason that there's a guy named a general manager. He knows how to control the team and knows what works for a team. Outside of James Jones, are there any former NBA players that are general managers that are actually good at their job? Also, James Jones was not a big advocate for player empowerment. He couldn't say what he wanted to because he was not a star in this league. He had no leeway when he was playing on teams. And yes, James Jones is an elite GM. That is why you don't have LeBron James being your GM right now or Stephen Curry or Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant has ruined some teams because of his expectations. Kevin Durant ruined his chance at more championships because he got mad because somebody was questioning his ego, aka Draymond Green. Kevin Durant asked the Brooklyn Nets to trade their young pieces and picks for a star named James Harden, which ended up bringing them nothing as they got one year of James Harden and no championships. Player empowerment is stupid and pointless, and it brings nothing. That's why when small market teams figure out that player empowerment does not benefit them, that they will eventually start winning more than big market teams. Because big market teams always cater to the players. And while that does work for a couple super teams every once in a while, the team will get ran dry of their draft picks and young assets. And in the end of the day, they won't be able to put, a, put together a good trade for the next five years, aka the Los Angeles Lakers. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, do all that, and peace out. Hey, come on, I got a bag on me. You try to take it, leave you stinking like your last homie. She kinda cakey, little baby, put that ass on me. But I ain't that horny, do you got some cash for me? Why every time you ask him that, bitch, is that funny? And you keep trying to hold the strap, you won't slap for me. You too happy, I can tell you never had money. Every time you get on live, got a flash money.